The Singapore government has launched a new initiative to introduce budget meals in more heartland coffee shops by the end of July, aiming to provide Singaporeans with affordable food options. However, some members of the community have expressed skepticism about the initiative's effectiveness in addressing the root causes of rising food prices. Highlighting high rents at hawker centers as a key issue, they suggest that the government should consider abandoning open bidding for hawker stalls to address these concerns more effectively. On Monday, July 1, the Housing and Development Board, HDB, and Enterprise Singapore, Enterprise SG, announced that 330 coffee shops across HDB estates will offer these budget meals by the end of the month. This initiative includes 180 coffee shops operated by nine private chains. HDB and Enterprise SG said they will continue to engage with operators of privately owned HDB coffee shops to encourage them to provide budget meal options, while considering their business sustainability. The rollout will see these eateries gradually introducing affordable meal options and accepting CDC vouchers, extending beyond HDB rental coffee shops. The private coffee shop chains participating in this initiative are Baiting, Broadway, De Tian, Chongcheng, Food Fair Capitium, Kimli, Kim Sanlung, Kofu, and Select. Of the 180 coffee shops, 120 are privately owned, representing nearly 30% of privately owned coffee shops in HDB estates. The remaining 60 are rental coffee shops that will now voluntarily offer budget meals ahead of their lease renewal. Budget meals include lunch or dinner options priced at 3 Singapore dollars and 50 cents, 2 US dollars and 60 cents, and below, with drinks priced at 1 Singapore dollar and 20 cents and below. Around 150 rental HDB coffee shops islandwide offer over 1,000 budget meals and drinks, according to the press release on Monday. On July 1, Senior Minister of State, SMS, for National Development Sim and, and Senior Minister of State for Trade and Industry Lo Yenling unveiled community budget meal decals at four stalls in the Chongqing Miwa coffee shop at Block 802 Tampanese Avenue 4. Stalls displaying these red and blue decals will accept CDC vouchers as payment. Notably, comments on Singapore's mainstream media outlet CNA and the Straits Times Facebook posts revealed skepticism about the effectiveness of these initiatives in addressing rising food prices. Netizens highlighted that the root cause of the issue lies in high rents at hawker centers, which they argue significantly contribute to the high cost of living in Singapore. They suggested that the government could lead by example by initiating rent reductions, starting with establishments like Capitium. One suggestion proposed that the government should consider abandoning the open bidding process in favor of balloting, with a maximum limit imposed to prevent exorbitant bids that cater only to the wealthy. Some pointed out specific instances where government policies, such as the increase in GST and utility prices, have further exacerbated the financial burden on citizens, particularly affecting essential goods like food. A netizen questioned why the government seems unable to effectively tackle the issue of rising costs that affect both businesses and consumers. He highlighted a perceived imbalance where businesses, particularly small businesses facing high rentals and other costs, are struggling while consumers are portrayed as needing charity or assistance due to high prices. Another comment expressed frustration with the accessibility of budget meals, likening it to a needle in a haystack. The commenter added that transportation to reach these affordable meal options might offset the savings, emphasizing the broader challenges faced by consumers in managing living expenses. While the latest government initiative aims to provide affordable food options for ordinary Singaporeans, some netizens pointed out that Singaporeans still struggle to find affordable food that offers reasonable nutrition. One netizen flagged that some food stalls offer smaller portions of items other than rice. This observation raises concerns about whether these initiatives truly ensure adequate portions for customers, despite efforts to provide affordable options. As reported by the Straits Times, SMS SIM and addressed criticism regarding the budget meal food portion issue by emphasizing that authorities collaborate with operators and stallholders in response to feedback on portion sizes and nutritional balance. She confirmed that HDB officers conduct regular visits to evaluate the quality of meals offered under the scheme and mentioned plans to implement mechanisms for gathering public feedback on the budget meal initiative. Separately, SMS Lo Yenling provided an update on the CDC voucher scheme, 
stating that as of June 25, more than 883,000 families, constituting 67% of all Singaporean households, have claimed their vouchers from the latest tranche. Since June 25, every Singaporean household has been eligible to claim 300 Singapore dollars in CDC vouchers for spending at participating hawkers, heartland merchants, and supermarkets. Combined with the 500 Singapore dollars distributed in January, each household will receive a total of 800 Singapore dollars in 2024. However, a netizen pointed out that CDC vouchers cannot possibly last for six months. There are also comments questioning whether the use of CDC vouchers is indeed transitioning towards functioning more like food coupons for the economically disadvantaged. Meanwhile, a sarcastic comment questioned the disparity between national wealth and individual financial security, implying that the need for budget meals suggests widespread economic challenges that a wealthy nation should ideally mitigate. In March, Workers' Party, WP, Member of Parliament, MP, for Sengkang GRC, Louis Chua Kengwi, had argued against a purely price-based tender system, where hawker stalls are awarded to the highest bidder. He emphasized the need for measures to ease the financial pressures on hawkers and ensure the affordability of hawker food for the public, especially in the face of the rising cost of living in Singapore. One of his proposals involved considering the adoption of a rental cap, drawing parallels with its successful introduction in this year's Geylang Sarai Ramadan Bazaar. He suggested that a similar approach could be extended to stalls in NEA-operated hawker centers. In response to Mr. Chua's proposal, Dr. Ko Po Kun, the Senior Minister of State, SMS, for Sustainability and the Environment, defended NEA's commitment to fostering a supportive environment for hawkers. He explained that NEA lets out hawker stalls through monthly tender exercises, which are transparent and fair. Rent will be adjusted towards the assessed market rent after the first three years. Only about 4% of cooked food stalls in hawker centers today are paying rent at above the assessed market rent. These stalls would be in their initial three-year tenancy and their rental would be based on their tender bid. When they renew their tenancy at the end of the three years, it will be adjusted to the assessed market rent. Median rental across non-subsidized cooked food stalls has remained constant at about 1,250 Singapore dollars since 2015. For sex, NEA considers proposals from operators with lower rental and operating costs for hawkers. Operators are not allowed to vary charges to hawkers over the tenancy term. NEA has implemented measures such as the Productive Hawker Center, PHC, Program and Hawkers Productivity Grant, HPG, to help hawkers enhance their operations and productivity. NEA's Hawkers Development Program, HDP, and Incubation Stall Program, ISP, provide holistic training to equip aspiring hawkers with skills needed to run a successful hawker business. Over 60 hawkers have joined the trade through these programs. Dr. Ko announced the opening of three new SEHC hawker centers, Woodley Village, Anchorvale Village, and Pungal Coast Hawker Centers, designed to offer affordable and tasty hawker food in pleasant dining environments. Thank you for watching. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, 2230, for more updates.